Uh, what Clayson and I are doing right now is making some antelope. Uh, we're gonna make chicken fry out of it. This is tenderized meat. And my first step is getting it out, making sure we're thawed out. And then I place it in this measuring. Deal, you can use any type of pan that you wanna use for this. So I put it in there. Um, again, just, this is about two and a half pounds of antelope tenderized backstrap. Now what I do is I take some milk and I almost cover it all up. Not much of a reason for that. Um, other than I'll show you in a second when I add my next Now thing. for the now for the magic ingredient. Um, Clay says they're building houses, but we're gonna put some Cholula in there. And I, the way that I do this is I'm gonna open up the lid. Let the lid drop. And this is how I go about it. This stuff, I'm gonna have to switch hands. Everybody's like, how much do you put in there? Well, I put a lot in there and I'll show you. I don't know this actually does anything. I get it. I've never had this actually turn out to be too hot for anyone. So again, this is Cholula. I got antelope backstrap and milk in there and then I'll show you our next steps. I've washed my hands I get in here and I just make sure we mix this all around on that antelope. And Clay said he wants to show you where his toys are, but this is my mixture right here. I make sure we get it all mixed around. That milk will turn a reddy-ish color. Um, and then I let this sit for an hour or two. Um, the, the, the meat's still pretty cold. I like to get it close to room temperature because our next steps are gonna be frying and I like to be as close to room so while temperature. While that's sitting and we're getting that flavor onto it, I think this is actually some pancake mix. And Clay is gonna tell what what's next, Clay? He likes to add cereal to it, but I think a pancake mix or you can just put flour or whatever you want to. And I'm gonna start making our batter for it. Um, I double batter, but we'll get to that step in just a little. the eggs, you can tell I switched. Um, the one thing I do do is I'm gonna use maybe two or three eggs to start off with. And I do a double batter so it gets super messy. Put some, Clay thinks you should put some Legos in there. So we got our three eggs and we got our uh, flour. And when we come back to it, we're gonna dip eggs, flour, eggs, flour. And then we'll be ready to hit the pan with it. And I'll show you all of that. As I get ready to cook and we're gonna start frying everything, what I use is peanut oil, just so everybody knows. And we're not gonna use a lot of it, but it gives you a much more golden, crispy crust to these, basically what's a chicken fry, but it's gonna be an antelope fry. So that would be our next step is, I, I use that, but you don't have to make sure people aren't allergic to peanuts, I guess. But for the most part, that's what I go with. All right, so when I put the oil in, I don't go deep in the pan. It's not like we're deep frying, we're gonna flip sides. So that's about how thick we go with the peanut oil. I'll come in here, get the fire going on the oil. I don't go crazy hot on it. So like on ours, I'm putting it at about a six. It's not maybe medium, because you can get this the, the grease too hot. So the plan here is, I'll start battering as that's as soon as I feel like that's warm enough. And people always ask, how do you know that the oil's hot enough? And I will show you my simple technique, which a lot of you already know. So what I do here is I'll take that meat out. And most people are gonna tell you, you need to have it uh, dry so the batter sticks. I don't really care. Like I have no issues with that. Um, I, run the, I run into the egg wash. Try to get in. This is so tender, it's insane. So I come in here to the want do that pretty good. Both sides, and then I'm gonna come back in really fast there. I may not get the whole thing, and then I come back over. And you can put this in a ziplock and do it like a shake and bake. And you can even take this and put it in the oven at 350 for, um, I've seen it take about 20 minutes and you get a really, really, really tender one. Make sure you turn them over at 10 so that you get a crispy crust on it. So my next step is we are going over to the oil. I always have this flour on my hands and it's not even sizzling, sort of sizzling in my oil. So it's not ready for my antelope. I just take a plate, you can take a, 
better plate than this, but you can put a paper towel down so that we go straight from oil onto the plate. Oil the plate, oil the plate, oil the plate. And um, that way they're fresh and the paper towel on the bottom just kind of absorbs some of the excess oil if we don't have the oil in the pan quite hot enough. Looks like my oil is hot enough now. So I set that down real slow and you may want to use tongs, don't burn yourself. And I'm going to wait about three and a half to four minutes and then I'm going to slowly flip. Oh, it's been about three or four minutes. I'm going to try to grab this super tender antelope, flip it over. And you can see the batter, how that peanut oil just makes it so golden. And I will flip. You can tell that if I see that I have it a little bit soft on that side, I'll go longer. So I may go four minutes on the next side and then I'm going to flip this back over again and crisp that edge up.